Good afternoon, everyone. Next talk is Publishing Well Found Python Packages by Jalen S. Jalen, the stage is yours. Thank you, Vipul. Uh, okay, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Jalen. Uh, welcome to my talk. So, my talk is about uh, publishing well found Python packages. So, so what is a well found package? Uh, uh, it's a package which has uh, some sort of a structure in place uh, by following uh, certain guidelines and uh, adopting some uh, practices which makes it easier to develop and maintain. It is done by, because it is possible uh, because of a sufficient documentation, uh, well-written test with a proper test coverage, and it, which facilitates a smooth collaboration between uh, the developers involved, uh, in developers and the community involved uh, in, in your project and your Python package. So how can we make our uh, uh, package well-formed? So these are some of the points that I had in mind, which I will go through in this talk, uh, right from uh, the styling aspect of your code uh, through testing uh, to packaging. So let's have a look at each of them one by one. So a good first step towards uh, making your package a uh, better formed uh, is by adopting a style, uh, I mean, style guide and sticking with it. Uh, it makes your code um, better uh, readable with a uh, uh, more readable with the consistent formatting and and by and if you use uh, a linting and styling tool along with it, it can ha greatly help in uh, uh, detecting subtle bugs that would be that would often go unnoticed uh, if it wasn't for the usage of such tools. As as for the style uh, style guide pa part of your uh, I mean of your uh, project, PEP eight is of course a good starting point. But as PEP8 itself stays, uh, it's uh, better to uh, uh, take this as guidelines instead of as steadfast rules. You should, I mean, in short, you shouldn't be following them blindly. Just because it says so, it has to be so. No, it, it, but it's better if you don't do it like that. PEP8 itself uh, advises against that. For example, consider a long uh, link, a uh, link to an external site or something that you you that you uh, wish to include in in the documentation part of your code as a as a comment or something, and say that your style guide uh, I mean mandates your uh, number of characters in your uh, in per line to be uh, some let's say 89 is a common number, and your link is too too long. It's a uh, hundred characters or something. If you're following your style guide just like that, you may be tempted to uh, a slice up the link or something into two lines, but that would mess up things a little bit, right? I mean, uh, if you want to follow that link, you have to either copy paste or join them together and click on it. No, that's not doesn't sound that good, uh, right? Uh, so it is better to leave it like that, probably, uh, so that your editor, whichever editor that you're using, can recognize instantly it as a link that you and that you can follow to that. Uh, link just by clicking on it instead of just copy pasting or anything like that. So what tools can be used for uh, for styling and linting? PyLint and Flakeate are arguably the most prominent uh, linting and styling tools uh, that are widely in use by the Python community these days. Uh, they are uh, they have, they offer configurable options so you need not stick with the defaults although the default options are are can be used as a good starting point, and you can configure them uh, as to fit uh, the needs of your project as you go on. For instance, you can change the line, number of characters per line uh, limit if you wish. And then there is Black. Black is uh, an automatic code reformatting tool, which is quite popular and getting more popular by the day. So uh, suppose that. Uh, you spend too much time uh, uh, fixing the styling and formatting uh, of your code all the time, uh, especially if a lot of projects are contributing to your project, and uh, you and you're willing to let an external tool take control of over uh, the for styling and formatting part. Uh, you can use Black. 
it automatically does the i mean in no matter what style that uh, that uh, your uh, code is written in if it is valid python code black will automatically reformat it so that all the files all the source files will look uh, in a uniform style to follow a uniform style so black is black uh, thus can uh, in big bigger project in big projects with a lot of people contributing to it uh, black can uh, uh, produce i mean considerably save your time uh, uh, fixing i mean time spent on fixing the uh, styling and formatting part of it of course it uh, it means that you have to give up uh, some of the fine control over your code formatting part but it is usually worth it another aspect that can be used uh, to make your uh, package better formed is by using uh, type annotations and using uh, some static and doing some static type checking on it on your co code python has been supporting uh, static type i mean type annotations in for quite some time now and it you making taking advantage of it by actually using it in your code and not only improves the readability of your code but also uh, allows us uh, the developers to uh, uh, use a static static type checking tools uh, to run uh, type checks on it so in a way using static type checking you can combine the uh, ease of use offered by the dynamic uh, typing of python along with the static type system in in some way uh, using a, st a static type checking tool so some of the popular type checking tools that we have is uh, include mypy pytype and pyray so let's see an example to see how uh, static type checking and uh, type annotations can help improve our code so i have a function here add if which takes two arguments x and y if x boolean value is uh, turns out to be true whatever that value or is if it's boolean value like pool of x turns out to be true the function will return add 10 uh, to the value of y and return it otherwise the value of y is returned unchanged so just by looking at it uh, it's not exactly easy to figure out uh, what exactly uh, this add if function expects as arguments and what exactly it returns i mean Okay, x, look at x. x could be a number, an integer, a float, a boolean, a list, a string. It could be anything. Anything that can produce a, a boolean value if you apply a bool on it. It would work. But that may not be what you actually expect. So let us use uh, type here annotations and see how it looks like afterwards. As you can see, just by adding type annotations, uh, the readability part or alone has been considerably improved. Now we know that x uh, add if expects x and y as with pool and integer values and returns an int. So obviously the add if function as it is used in the uh, line seven of the, in the second part, uh, which should be an error. I mean, but uh, uh, in Python by itself cannot uh, consider it as an error. So, but if you run a type static type checking tool like uh, mypy on it, you'll get the following error like this. It Add if expected a bool as the first argument, but instead it got an integer, which is two. We fix that and return a true, I mean, uh, pass true as the value, and the error disappears. The, it may look simple in this uh, example, but in bigger code bases, uh, such errors are very difficult to spot. Another concern is dead code. It is quite natural for a project to uh, have some dead code uh, accumulated. I mean, it's uh, not always possible to uh, manually find the dead code. Uh, you, the project will uh, have some dead code over as it evolves. So this dead code sometimes can interfere with the other, I mean, the real code and, uh, and produce very puzzling errors. Uh, so this is where a uh, a uh, dead code uh, elimination and detection and eliminated gumption. Uh, if, if you're going for a static uh, dead code identification tool, you can use Vulture. Vulture uh, is quite fast because it is uh, does static analysis uh, using the abstraction X3 of Python and doesn't actually run the code. Uh, it can identify the dead code with, a confident, with an appropriate confidence level uh, like that. Um, of course, uh, just by writing your code, uh, you have, okay, your code is fine, or you think it is fine, but it's always a good idea to test, right? So you can do unit testing to uh, 
to be sure that your uh, code works as you expect it to work and doesn't do something anything crazy by mistake or by chance or some features of the language or something like that. It's good to do testing. In the case of unit testing, it is uh, it would be helpful to uh, design your code so that uh, your different functionalities are different in the separate functions, separate testable functions. Uh, you can use the built-in unit test module of Python in its personal standard library to do the testing, or you could use an other test frameworks like uh, PyTest. Uh, between the two, I would advise you to use PyTest unless you don't have to use unit test because PyTest is usually uh, easier to write and easier to understand. So let's consider at an example of the advantage of using uh, unit testing, uh, in this case using PyTest. I have here a function named check which accepts two, uh, two arguments, the first name and last name, which are strings, and returns uh, the ratio of the uh, it is supposed to return the ratio of the first name to the last name. So the result should be length of first name divided by last name. Uh, you should, I guess you will have already spotted it in, in the slide. I have uh, the function returns the, does it the other way around. It instead of dividing the first name by the last name, it divides the last name by the first name. But suppose I missed it while writing it. So I write, but I, uh, instead of uh, do, leaving it untested, I had written the test for it. And I check if it works as I expected it to be. But no, it's not as I expected it to be. So I, so I, I will be prompted to uh, pay closer attention to this. And I see it, I fix it, and it's, it works out all right. Next, now comes test coverage. Uh, having the test alone is uh, not always useful, right? I mean, it, would te it should test the part of the code that should be tested. It should have adequate test coverage. It should cover the code base of your uh, project uh, uh, well enough so that uh, you test the uh, parts of your relevant, the relevant parts of your code that needs to be tested. If you, you use a te coverage, uh, test coverage tool, you, would, uh, you should be able to see that uh, part, of the, uh, part of your code uh, which the test have m missed. And you should also get a test coverage percentage. Uh, tools like coverage.py and uh, which is a standalone uh, third-party module, and PyTest Core, which is a PyTest plugin, can help you with this. Uh, let's kind of consider another example to illustrate uh, the coverage, the test coverage. I have uh, in the left, I have the function, and the right, I have the um, test for it. Uh, this function is very simple. It returns true if the value is a, an even number. Otherwise, it returns an odd. Uh, I mean, otherwise, it returns false. Uh, notice that in the test that I have written, it's, uh, it considers only the uh, behavior of the function when it is a past an even number. So I run coverage on it, and it shows me that one line has been missed. Then the coverage is not as it should be, it's not covered, it's not less. I fix that by adding another test case, I mean another, uh, to cover that, that uh, part of the function as well, and I get 100% coverage. So now we have got a lot of tests uh, to be run on your project, right? Uh, from uh, from PyLint, MyPy, Vulture, uh, you name it. So, it uh, so it's definitely useful to have some sort of a test me automation mechanism in place which can run all the tests for you just like that instead of you having to run all these tests manually one by one. You can use this test automation tool to run, run them all at once or as, as per your wishes. And you should also be able to uh, 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 run these tests in all the supporter environments. So right now you probably have tested in your own machine, it works well good enough, but it should also work in the systems of other people who will be using your Python package. Python module. So these other people may be using using different versions of Python language, or maybe even different implementation of Python language. So you need to be sure uh, that you, your project, I mean your module, works as you expected on all these environments. You can use test automation tools like uh, Docs and Nox for that. These uh, uh, projects, uh, these Docs and Nox can uh, uh, run the test locally or with the use of some continuous integration, CI/CD to uh, and the elements as well. So now let's look at the package layouts, which is, has some role to play in the testing part, some prominent load, if I may add. 
uh, flat layout is that uh, with flat layout I have the package which is in here is named package name the package name packages uh, source code under the package name directory and the tests that are used to uh, uh, test that package name package are present in the same directory level you see package name and test are present in the same directory and without any nesting in it and then there is SRC layout where the packages uh, source code in the under the package name directory is isolated into an SRC for another directory by adding another directory level to further separate it from the test directory this has some part to play see running uh, your talks test i mean what talks really does tools like talks what what they really do is that they uh, create a temporary uh, separate isolated uh, virtual environment uh, and install your um, project your mo module into that virtual environment and test it there so that it the testing would happen as it would uh, as the as if the package is exp uh, uh, installed in a different environment and a different fresh environment so that it if it works there it should work on other machines as well that is the idea behind uh, running a talk test as in an isolated virtual environment but if you run these tests in a flat layout package uh, using a package with flat layout what really could happen is that if your your test which should be importing which would which would import your package source code from uh, package source code would import from the package itself because they are in the same directory level within the, within the same package it would in uh, import the source code your programs from the package name directory itself instead of actually importing from the installed package which is available in the site packages directory in, in your virtual environment of talks so this is a problem of accidental import happens it is not importing what it was expected to import this is a problem with flat layouts but in src layout this problem does not happen because of the way uh, Python imports work, uh, be and because of this uh, further isolation into a, a deeper into a nested uh, directory, uh, and a problem of accidental import in the test from the package name directory itself is avoided. It is not possible usually, and it would and uh, and it would install from the site packages directory itself, and the test would work as it expected to as as expected. So. This is a reason why uh, one of the reasons why uh, a lot of projects moved away from uh, flat layout to a SRC layout. But that said, uh, there is no officially recommended layout. Uh, it's important to say that uh, in the Python community has not uh, reached a consensus uh, about which layout is better or which layout is bad. Uh, you should uh, decide that for yourself. Uh, check out these links uh, to see some interesting takes on this matter. So once your package is ready, well tested, good, cool, everything is ready, you need to be able to share your package. For that, share your module. For that, you have to package your uh, uh, source code into a file or format which can be used uh, to install that module into other systems like wheel or sdist. To do this packaging part, you can use setup tools uh, from the PyPA, Python Packaging Authority, or newer tools like uh, Flit and Poetry. So once you have the packaged uh, file re files ready, you need to be able to publish it into a server of your choice, usually uh, commonly PyPI.org server. Uh, if you're using setup tools, you need another uh, package like a Twine to uh, do the publishing part, to push your uh, source code, I mean your package to the uh, server. And flit, tools like Flit and Poetry can do this publishing part by themselves. Uh, these are some of uh, some other tools. There are a lot of other tools uh, available which can help uh, in managing your project uh, better. These are some of them. There are a lot of others. Uh, you uh, read up on them. I would advise you to. I would recommend you to read up on them, and to use those tools which you think you can make your uh, help your project be may be better it may not be a good idea to use all of them at once. i mean all the uh, tools that you uh, find maybe it's not a good idea maybe but use your judgment and uh, use what you will need 
So the way forward is uh, is that the pyproject.toml file uh, of your project of your package has will become has become already the center point around which your project uh, package revolves, and it's being ex expanded upon. And uh, a lot of uh, tools that I mentioned, like uh, um, Flakegate, uh, Talks, and all, uh, they used to have separate uh, configuration files uh, because uh, because there was not unified way earlier. Argue sometimes uh, we can use a configure instead of instead into the pipe project or Thomas file so without needing for another uh, file so this Thomas format and the Thomas file has be, will become more important in the future and we can probably expect a Thomas uh, module in the standard library and some many like are already in, uh, have become popular because of this Thomas files so that's it. I've uh, come to the end of the talk. Uh, so let me summarize uh, what we saw so far. We use so uh, style linting and styling, uh, static type checking using MyPy and other tools, uh, dead code elimination and identification, uh, testing, test coverage, test automation, and finally packaging. So uh, that's it. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any talks, I'd be happy to uh, take them. Hey, uh, so we don't really have any questions as far as I have been noticing the talk, but we do have yeah, one cool. question. Where can we get to your slides? That's the thing that was asked the most. Uh, I, will, I will share the link uh, uh, on the chat so, so, uh, soon enough. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah, folks, yeah. I guess you, if you want the slide, you'll have to go to Zulip Bangalore stream, and that's where Zulin will be sharing it. Yeah, sure. All right. Thanks a lot, Zulin. It was a great talk, and we really appreciate it. Have a good day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.